Welcome to the Drayway and welcome to a brand new countdown. Yes, we're gonna, this is day 73. 73 days until Donald Trump becomes the new president. Yes, we are now 73 days away. This is the first day in a 73 day series from now all the way until Donald Trump on January 20th becomes our new president. And yes, that is just 73 days away. And what can we expect? Well, this much I can tell you. I've talked about this before, but you know, Republican presidents don't do very well. And I, you know, ever since the, the, the election, I've been saying the same thing ever since you know, people have been calling me saying, what do we do? Donald Trump won, what do we do? And I'm like, what do we do? <laughs> I can tell you what you do you hope for the best and you prepare for the worst. Because Republican presidents, as I've said before, going back to Nixon, I know some of you don't remember Nixon, but Nixon was a Republican president that was a racist and a criminal. Sound familiar? Yeah, he was so bad that both parties were like, yeah, you gotta go. You have to leave like now. And they kicked him out of office. He literally had to walk out the door and leave in a helicopter. Yeah, that's how bad that Republican president was. But it didn't stop there. Because then we got Ronald Reagan. And everybody thought, well, Ronald Reagan talks so great about America. But Ronald Reagan was a criminal. Ronald Reagan and most of his staff ended up, you know, Ronald Reagan didn't go to jail. But most of his staff got indicted or went to, went to prison because I think uh, like 130 people got indicted because they just broke law after law after law because Ronald Reagan was kind of losing it at the end there and they just went crazy. So that was kind of the, the whole Reagan thing. Things went to hell in a has handbasket at the end. And the same thing happened again because then we went on to Clinton. The 90s were wonderful. We all had money, we had a great time. And instead of passing off to Gore, the country somehow thought it would be a good idea to pick a Republican president again. And here we got George Bush, who was a complete idiot. You know, nice enough guy, I guess, but just dumber than a box of rocks and got us involved in things we never should have been involved in and completely crashed our economy. So here comes Obama to, to fix everything and to make things better and spends eight years doing it. And do we pass it off to Hillary? No, no. We, the country again, once deci decides to throw back in a Republican. So Donald Trump spends the next few years crashing our economy again. Yeah, his last year in, in office, millions of people without jobs, the economy in hell in a handbasket. <coughs> and I can remember buying Exxon stock in the low 30s when Trump was president. Right now, the, the Exxon stock is about 121, 122 area. So if you have Exxon stock, Trump's gonna be president again. So I would sell today if I were you. <laughs> if you have Exxon right now and you know Trump is gonna be in office, yeah, um, you're gonna be able to buy it at a much lower price when Trump is done. So if you got that Exxon stock, I would sell it now. But once again, we have Biden who took measures to bring the country back. We're number one in the world, but that wasn't good enough for people. People thought, thought the economy should be so much better than it was. Here we are coming out of COVID. And like I, I've said before, you know, Americans don't blame the economy on Trump because they blame it on COVID. But the inflation that came because of COVID, they blame on Biden. I've never seen anything like it. It's the weirdest thing ever. Trump had, had nothing to do with COVID, but Biden and inflation because of COVID had everything to do with Biden. It's the weirdest thing ever. But, you know, welcome to the Drayway. I'm glad you're here. We're gonna be talking about this for the next uh, 73 days. And I just want you to know what I think we can expect. Um, it's going to be the same as, as always. You have to understand, Republicans don't come with plans. 
you got to understand, American people didn't vote for a single plan that uh, uh, that uh, Trump has. Trump didn't Trump didn't lay out a plan and say all he said was I'm going to make everything better. I'm going to end the war in a day. I'm I'm going to do this in a day. I'm going to do that in a day. He's he's just going to make things better. And Americans are like, yeah, he's going to make things better. He doesn't have an itemized plan on anything. You know, of course, all the news wanted to know. Kamala Harris is, what's your, give me the details. What are the details of your plan? Americans don't care. Let's make this perfectly clear. What Americans did a few days ago was mostly white people voted for a white person. That's exact, make no mistake about it. Let's, let me say it again. Mostly white people voted for a white guy. Have we never seen that before? That's what we do year after year after year after year when it comes to presidents. We vote for the old white guy. That's what we do. So it shouldn't shock any of us whatsoever that it was done again. The white people showed up and they voted for the white guy. And as far as Trump, Trump has now beaten women twice. That's what Trump does and Trump beat a woman again. So I, I, I am not shocked at all uh, uh, that Trump won. Um, again, um, it, it, it kind of, it's kind of what the United States does. And, and that's kind of what the Republican Party has turned into because the Republican Party isn't about specific ideas anymore. It's more about, you know, under the, co under the cover a little bit, it's just about keeping America white. That's what the Republican Party stands for now, just keeping America white. And if you haven't caught on to that yet, over the next four years, you will. But let me know what you think. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. 73 days away to Trump becoming president. But I want to know what your thoughts are. Put your thoughts in the comments. We have a lot more to talk about. Right now, I'm speaking to, to women. I'm speaking to women, and I want to talk to you guys because I want you to understand it was just a battle that we lost. And unfortunately, um, Republicans are going to get in the White House, and Republicans are going to start making laws to make it even more restrictive for you women. You, you might as well just come to the conclusion that's what's going to happen. And state by state, they're going to continue to come after women. Now. What does that mean for you? That means that, again, it's just one battle. We lost one battle. And there's going to be a lot more battles because slowly but surely, we're going to have to get engaged, come up with a new plan, and come up with a new way to bring more people into our camp and to make people understand this is about women and their bodies and being the same in this country and not being treated as an other. Because right now, uh, there are serious restrictions in 20 states. What happens when there's a national ban? And you probably say, oh, that, Drayton, that national ban is impossible. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You've got the Supreme Court that would back it. And now you have Trump in the White House. And believe me when I tell you, the, the, the evangelicals are going to be pushing Trump to do a national ban on abortion. So what can we do? I, I keep saying it over and over again. We lost one battle. We haven't lost the war. This is all about all of us coming together and understanding that we really do not have a United States. And, and when I say a United States, first of all, I have some of you talking to me about unity. Yeah, um, you can take unity and shove it. And I mean that. Because for four years, you wouldn't, even, you wouldn't even acknowledge that Biden was president. You were pretending that Trump was still president. Or you, got, you pretended that Trump got uh, somehow uh, mistreated in the election and, 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 it, and it was a fake election. You guys did that for four years, including Trump himself. So if you think there's any unity with Republicans and Democrats, take a hike. No. And I'll tell you exactly why. Because the Republican Party is misogyny, racism, and against women. 
And I'm not going to partner with that. I'm not going to side with that. I'm not for that. The question is, are you? Because when I talk about unity, when I talk about unity in the United States, I'm not talking Republican and Democrat. I'm talking about men and women coming together and agreeing that women should be treated just like men. And you shouldn't have medical procedures different for women than men. The government should not be involved in a woman's body under any circumstances. Stay out of their decision between the woman and the doctor. It's none of your business. But at the same time, I don't want to hear any of this nonsense about unity. You can take your unity and shove it. Because for the last four years, you didn't say what, for four years, you didn't say what, I'm not my president, let's go Brandon. I mean, you guys did everything to make sure you, we, we knew that he wasn't your president, that you thought Donald Trump somehow got ripped off. So please do not come to me with this whole unity BS, because that's what it is, complete BS. So there will be no unity. I'm not gonna side with misogynist and racist and, and people that won't understand, leave a woman's body alone. That's my thought on it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Stick around, we got one more comment to go. Everybody's talking about how to take advantage of uh, Trump becoming president from an investment standpoint. I think real estate uh, is a really bad investment right now. I, I don't think real estate's gonna do well over the next uh, three to five years. Um, and I'm also very wary of certain stocks. Um, you know, I bought uh, Exxon stock when Trump was president in the low 30s. Uh, Exxon stock today is in the 121 to 122 range. So I sold my Exxon yesterday. <laughs> I, already, I already got out of that stock. I'm not gonna go into particulars on every stock, but I can tell you this, as a sector, I sold all of my oil stocks. And would I suggest you do that? I suggest you talk to your financial advisor or uh, whoever you're working with and, and consider that greatly because Donald Trump last time was not good for the oil industry. And I know we don't talk about this a lot, but Donald Trump wasn't good for a number of industries. He wasn't good for farmers and he wasn't good for the oil industry at all. He literally crashed the oil market last time. Tens of thousands of oil workers, uh, uh, dozens of oil companies out of business. I mean, it was a disaster. What Donald Trump did to the, our, our oil economy, uh, yeah, it was, it was really, really, really bad. So I, from an investment standpoint, and I like talking about investments, I like talking about stocks. I was, like I've said before, I was a stockbroker back in the 80s and early 90s, and I, I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed working for Shears and Lehman. But um, I, I can tell you right now, uh, he was not good for the oil industry. So if you're invested in oil stocks, I would consider a move. Uh, being that Exxon was in the 30s when he was president, could we see that again? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm gonna hope not, but uh, you know, I'm also gonna be wary of oil stocks with Donald Trump being president. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, and, and thanks for joining me for the Drayway. Uh, you know, look, we got 73 days left to go. From time to time, I'm gonna bring up some investments that I, I, would, I would consider and I would think about. Uh, my suggestion right now, like I said, I, I just wanted to do this little, this little bit about oil stocks because I just kind of wanted to put a warning out there for my people that are subscribed. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button but I just wanted to put a little warning sign out there for you because I like talking about investments. I, um, I've been active in it since the 70s. I've been buying stocks since the 70s and it's kind of a, a big habit of mine and something that I look into every single day. But I feel like I would not be, be being truthful with my audience if I didn't tell you I would be very wary of oil stocks with Donald Trump coming into presidency. 
And, and, and believe me, over the next 73, because like I said, we're, we're doing the countdown now. We are 73 days away from Donald Trump becoming president. And uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of different subjects that have to do with things you should probably be looking at and things that will probably happen because of a Donald Trump presidency. And this is just one of the things I felt like I had to say something because the last time Donald Trump really trashed the oil industry and could it happen again? I, I would just lay, I, I would hate to have you guys be invested in oil stocks and watch those oil stocks drop once Donald Trump gets in the office and starts manipulating the markets to try to impress everybody with lowering gas prices. I, I would just, I would rather uh, look at other industries and we'll, we'll talk more about that. Remember, this is the Dre way. We're 73 days out until Trump takes office. I'm glad you're here with me. Uh, check out tomorrow. Tomorrow will be 72 days away and we'll be talking more about investments and some other things. So check out the Dre way tomorrow and every day. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again soon.